Data Studio is a free tool that turns your data into informative, easy to read, easy to share, and fully customizable dashboards and reports. You can make your report interactive with viewer filters and date range controls. With the help of the Data Studio, you can make customized dashboard for data visualization, which helps to analyze your tabulated data in an easy to understand way. You can connect with a wide set of any kind of data set. Visualize the same data set in a graphical form like charts, histogram, pie charts, etc. After that, you can make and compile a report for your data and share it with anyone. To use the Data Studio, you can connect to the data with the help of connectors which Google Data Studio provides to you. Here are the Google 18 connectors for you to connect to the Data Studio. We are using BigQuery in our case. There are more common ones like Google Sheets, Google Analytics, Search Ads 360, YouTube Analytics, and Google Surveys. There are some of the common tools which most of you might be familiar with. Moving forward, there are also some third-party connectors available to the link data with the Data Studio. If we move to the gallery, there are many different templates available which have some readily available statistics applied. Some readily available reports with graphs and dashboards which you can use with Data Studio. In the future lab exercises, we will make one of our own dashboards as well. Once you are on the home screen of your Data Studio, just click on the blank report and you will be redirected to a new report page. Then it asks you to select which type of connector you want to use. Right now, we are using the BigQuery, so we will be selecting BigQuery connector. After the selection is done, you will see that the same project in my accounts can be seen here. As we are working on the project, my first BigQuery project, which if you remember, we created at the beginning of this course. And when I click on this, it will show the two data sets we had in our project, the demo BigQuery and the sales record detailed. I will be using the second one. This is the one which we have been using till now. And then you move on further. It asks you to select which type of record you need. First one is which we use for the comparison of item type versus the sales medium. So this is of no use for us right now. Second one is the item type versus the total profit, which is also of no use for us. Last one is the sales record, which we actually need to perform our analysis and generate a report for our analytics. So we will add this in our report. Data Studio confirms to add it in the analytics. We confirm adding, adding it and add it in. So this is how you move the data into the report at first. You can see here you have all the summarized detail for the uploaded data set. This is the total count for the regions. These are the blocks where we will actually select the data which is of interest to us. In this Data Studio module, we will perform much more analysis than we performed in our last module. Just to recall, during the lab exercise in the previous section, we saw the comparison between the item type versus sales medium, in which we saw what type of item was sold using which medium, either it was online or offline. And then in the second comparison, we saw item type versus total profit, in which we saw which item type was more profitable and which was less profitable. We performed these two analyses using BigQuery, but this time we will use the graphical tool that is Data Studio. 
For this, we need to move this data to the data studio. Let's first perform a quick query so that we get data in output. After we run the query, we get the result with all the 50,000 rows in the output. After you get the output, you will see this option to explore data. Using this option, you can analyze the data graphically. This is the view you get when the data is loaded to the data studio. Currently, it shows record count in each region. If you accumulate the total record count, it will be 50,000. Let's start performing the two analyses we performed previously on a big query. The analysis for item type versus the sales medium and item type versus the total profit. Before we move toward the analysis, here are some charts to explore. Like for example, if you click on the pie chart, it will draw it for you. It shows the data in the table we had. It represents the percentage of available data set value for each region each totaling toward a percentage of 50,000. Among 50,000 which we have, 25.7% of data for a Europe region, 26.2% related to Sub-Sahara Africa, so on and so forth. Let's move back to our actual task for this exercise in the data section. Here you can see that there are two tabs, the data and the style. In the data section, you have multiple options like blending the data, the dimensions which is similar to group by statement in SQL, and matrix is actually to define in what parameters of data you are interested in. Currently, we are looking at the dimension of item type because we want to analyze the item type versus total profit. Next, I add the matrix which is the item type and the second matrix will be the total profit. On the left side, you can see that we have all 12 items versus their total profit. Notice that without using any query or any command line, you get your results just with the drag and drop features. This is what the power of Data Studio. We currently have a tabular view and let's convert it now to graphical one. I select the histogram and here by looking at the histogram directly, one can easily say that the cosmetic item has generated more profit as compared to all other items in our list. This is the same value 36412359623, which we saw in the SQL query result for the same analysis. Let me quickly run it and here scroll down and see the same answer. 3.64123596236 exponential 9. Same answer is achieved here in the data studio. So this actually shows that either you perform the query on BigQuery or on the data studio results. Results are the same. Just data studio as it provides the graphical view so it is easier to perform analytics on any dataset. In this lab exercise, we will perform the analysis for item type versus the sales medium, which we previously did using the BigQuery. For this, we have to run the query first. Select all from the table and run the query. Once it is executed, you will see the output result and then like before we will select the explore data option this time. On clicking it, we see this tabulated view.
we remove region from the dimensions and add item type here. You can also explore the features of drag and drop over here. Add the item type here and then we need the sales channel. This is all what we need for now. Here is all the data. We see here 24 items. That's because 12 item times to online or offline results 24. Next we go to the chart option and select the column chart. Here is the output graph. We have not performed any query or run any code and still we get the same answers. For example, if you see the count for cosmetics, the online sales were 2063 and offline sales were 2130. For the same case, if I go back to the result of the query and perform a quick query, select all from the table. We see here that the values are the same. For cosmetics, there were 2,063 online sales and 2,130 offline sales. The same result which we can see at the both side. To conclude, there are two methods you can analyze data to perform comparisons. One is to perform SQL query using the BigQuery interface or use the data studio tool to visually analyze the same data you have loaded in BigQuery user interface. So either using the BigQuery or the data studio, you can perform other analysis depending on the requirement. All right students, this is a sample report that was created by me in the data studio. It also has some data dashboards. Also, this is created using the same data set we were using for our lab exercises. In our upcoming labs, we will self-create this type of report. You can actually see here are some drop-down menus. You can select and filter out some specific regions to see how much sales and how much profit that region is earning. Which country lies in the selected region that is making higher purchases? How many units are sold? Also, the sales medium was either online or offline. We can also select the item type to apply some filters on specific items to see what items have more demand. Let's say I want to see vegetable graph. And here we see the graph. Most of the sales were during this time period of December 2015. Next, let's say we want to see the Middle East and North Africa region. So here is the graph for our selection. These were the countries under this selected region. You can also search for data using the date, of date filter. As this data is provided for 2010 to 2017. So let's see the data for the period January 1st to 2010 till January 1st, 2017. Once you apply the filter, you can see the countries under this region. You can also see what percentage of sales channel was used. Also, you can see how much data values are available for this region. Moving on to the next page for the same report I have created, you can see the sales record for some specific items. Like, let me select some of these options. Once the selected filter is applied, you can see the maximum and minimum profits of these items respectively. So, we will be going through all the process to create a similar report on Data Studio using the same dataset we have been using previously. And the jackpot is there is no SQL query involved in this complete process that is done on the Data Studio. It handles all the data on its own. 
This is the same data set on which we were working here on the BigQuery. In this lab exercise, we will analyze the same data by loading it into the data studio. This is the default query which we run so that we have all the data set in the result for us. It is not always easy to analyze the data through the tables. There are some complexities understanding issues all the time. It's not easy to perform analytics in tabular format. For this reason, analysts using usually move on to the graphical tools to have a proper understanding of the data set. Google BigQuery also enables you to analyze data graphically using the data studio. Once you select the explore option, you will see this landing page in front of you. Here in the right side panel, you have different types of charts. Let me click on the pie chart option for this data set. This converts the default selected data parameters into a pie chart graph. There are also some features for the data selection. Like what data you want to use and use in the analytics. You can also add multiple dimensions to the graphical view. Maybe I am interested in total revenue and total profit. First I will move total revenue and then total profit. Meaning that you can add any available field to your dimensions. Ok now I am interested in viewing my data using the histogram view. For this I am interested in looking at the region and their respective profits. So I add to add uh, these to the matrix. I am not interested in the record count. Here you can see the tabulated view on the left but we are interested in graphical representation. Select the bar representation and you see the histogram chart with respect to the profit and the region. So here you can see the bar chart and it shows a more clear view of the data we selected. We will cover most of the functionalities in our next lab exercises. This is the same window you see when the data is loaded to the data studio from Google BigQuery. The default table shows you the content related to the total value count for each region. As we know that Data Studio is an impressive tool to graphically analyze the data and it also helps you to create a report and share it with other team members. Let's see how we can perform all these functionalities. Here is the top panel in front of you. Here you can add a new page, add the data from the available resources or using connectors. You can also add a chart directly from here. It can be any table or a scoreboard, time series, bar pie chart. Also it has features of Google map integration and geolocations. In our data, you have seen that we have countries and regions, so this option is useful for us. In order to see the profit, gains and losses, we can add the scorecard or the time series graph. Also, there are some more functionalities which you can add to your Google Data Studio report. Moving onwards, There is a beta functionality. These are the functionalities provided by the third parties. Then we have the controls. Using this you can apply some filters. You have the drop down list, a fixed size list. These two are the controls that are mostly used. Then you can also add a date range control using which we can see the margins during the selected date range. There is also an advanced filter control in our list using which you can set in the parameters at a higher level. For now, as we are interested in actually having a graph. So let me move this to the side. I will use the Google map to add my regions in a pictorial view. 
For this, what I'm going to do is to add a chart and select the bubble map because I actually like this view. You can add other options as well. Just select and place it. After it loads the data here, you see the view. Just notice I haven't written any single piece of code yet. And Data Studio loads all the data on its own just on clicks. Now when you select the map, you get the options for data field selection. Right now, the selected field is the country. Point here is that we actually want to have a view of the data in the table of our map. So for this, I am going to remove the country from my location dimension and add the region instead of it. As it is replaced, see that the country view is changed to the regional view. Bubbles here represents the regions within our dataset. To make the functions of maps available like zoom in, zoom out, you need to select the view mode. This also shows you how the report will look like. Now you can zoom in, zoom out. So once it is done, we can move on to the other options like we need to add a histogram, a date range, pie charts for the sales channel, and other functions that we saw in the completed report previously. In this lab exercise, we will add some control buttons and graphical charts using the same dataset. Before moving on further, let's save the file first. As it is a sales report, I will name it as Sales report financial year 2010 till 2017. Now I want to add a chart. It depends on you which one to use, but I will use the line uh, chart here. Let me resize the chart. Now, by default, it adds the default dimensions in the graph, but you can make it customized as per your requirements. It is currently showing the same data present in the table for regions and data counts. So, I will actually delete the record count from here as I want to see what are the sales or the unit sold with respect to the dates. Let's add the order date instead of the region. Replacing the record count. Again, let me search for the unit sold. Just add this to the matrix. So here you can see the graph for the unit sold against the dates. You can also change the chart view, like convert it to time series or smooth time series. These are a few options available here. Then next when we are done selecting the options, we can add some more charts for other options. Like uh, let me add another chart and be it a line chart. Again, it takes default, so let me change to what I need. The main thing is the order date. As most of the tracking is done using the order date, Next thing we can add instead of record count can be, um, let's look at the fields we have. These are the three options, so I'm more interested in looking at the total revenue. Finally, here are the two graphs for the total revenue and the unit sold against the order date. Let me have a look at the view how it looks. So here I feel a need for the date filter to be added. 
as the user must have a date filtration option so that they can see the date data using a specific periods of dates and there can also be filters for the regions like someone is keen to look at the regions of the middle east or north america or either europe for all this there is a need for the filters to do all this so let's see how to add such filters go to the add a control button here select the drop down list and drag it And when it is loaded, it shows by default selection for the order date. We can add a calendar for such selection. So I want to remove it and let me add the region to our control field. Once it is added, then we go to the view mode to check it. And here you see it automatically detects all the regions present in the dataset. I select uh, the Middle East and North Africa region and it filters all the data according to this region. The total data count for this data is 6128. Here is the total sales graph and the graph uh, region map in the map selection on the right. The data tells us that as I have selected the Middle East region, there are the records for the unit sold for all the items with respect to date. Now as I am talking about all items, so there should be a filter for particular item selection or what items are sold more in a particular region. Let's go back to the edit mode uh, and add some filters for this. Again add a control button drop down menu. Using this, I will give it the features for item type. So add it to the matrix field. Oh, sorry, control field. Reduce the, the size of the button so that it looks good in the report. Let's go back to the view mode. We go to the item type filter and see now we have a filter for all the items. Let me select only uh, the fruits from the item. And moving to the region filter, let me um, select the North uh, America region. So you see now your data is filtered and you get the sales graph for the filtered selection. 107 is the record count for this region. And here you get the graph for the fruits that were sold during the period to 2010 till 2017. This is how you can add more and more features to your report in the data studio. Make it more comprehensive and understandable to the user. So here are all the tools and filters you can add and explore them. We have seen previously how to add the control buttons to the report, but here we see that we have very less space left to add some more graphs or tables. And we want more graphs to be added to perform analysis on some more data fields. Obviously, you will need to move on the next page, but when you move to the next page, we see that there is a blank page and no controls available that we added previously. There can be cases you might not need them on the next page, but consider I want it to be on all the pages in my report and make it available so that anyone can apply those filters and check the data accordingly to those filters. So we will see that at the end of this exercise. For now, I will add some scorecards. Now, there are two types of them. One shows the full value and the other shows the com compact version of numbers. Let's use both of them. Just move some graphs so that we get some space for the source uh, scorecards. You can select the only numeric data field of our choice you want to display in the scorecard. 
See the small icons here with the text in the available fields. This shows the type of data it contains. Below starting from order ID are all the numeric data. So whenever we talk about the scorecard, we are only concerned with the numeric data. So here we see the unit sold. Uh, let it be there as we want to see that one as well. And then I also want to add another scorecard to see the value for the profit earned. When I add this, the value for the total record count is displayed by default. But I don't need this. I need the total profit, so I move it to the matrix. After moving, you see the scorecard is updated with the total profit value. We can also see the total revenue. There is another way if you directly drag the data field to report workspace, set it where you want it to be displayed and the format can be changed from the left sidebar for the charts option. Just like this, now it is more comprehensive. Let's now add a header text. So that by looking at it, we can actually say that what this report tells us about. Just add a text bar. And give it the title as it is a sales report. I will give title as sales report financial year 2010 till 2017. And let's format the basic settings accordingly. Now I will show you what we talked about in the beginning of the lab, how to stick the control buttons on the entire report. Select the button you want on the entire report. Right click on it and select the option Make Report Level. This means that this selected item will now be available at the place on the entire report. Let me also select the other control and text. Make it Report Level. And now, when you go to the next page, was empty and see that these controls are also available on this page. Let's move back to the first page and have it view in the view mode. We will add some more graphs on page 2 later. Here now, let's say, Someone is interested in looking for the statistics for Europe. You see that the total revenue also changes as per the filtered options and for all the item types as all are selected. And the total sales revenue for Europe region and its total profit were this that is displayed on scorecard which is throughout the years to 2010 till 2017. Okay, now maybe someone interested in the same region but for a specific item type. Like maybe they want to see the revenue generated on fruits only. There might be a possibility the person has a fruit business and he wants to see the rate of profit with time. There is 13.3 million profit And if I select the Asia region and see I get the values, it can be seen the profit for this region is less than as compared to Europe. This is how you can add more functionalities in your report, make it more comprehensive and filters as per the requirements. In this lab exercise for the Data Studio, we will look at how to apply the mathematical formulas in the Data Studio. Also how we can add the date range filter to our report. Let's move to the page 2. I will add a table to this page. It fetches the default data at first. It is showing the record count. We have already seen this. We will try a different data on this table now. This time we want to see what profit each item is getting. What is the maximum and minimum values just as we did while performing SQL queries in BigQuery. 
Moving forward, let us replace this region with the ty item type. Next, we need to move the total profit in the matrix section. The table is currently showing me the profit for each item type, which is not our requirement. We need the minimum value and maximum value. Or you can also use other options like uh, average, count, count distinct, uh, median, standard deviation or variance as well. Right now we will be focusing on minimum and maximum profit values. You see I have selected minimum and it displays the minimum value in the table but the column label is not appropriate so we can change it here and name it as minimum total profit. Also I need to add maximum values in the table against each item type. In the same way I will again move the total profit here and then apply the match function to it but this time the max function and rename it to max profit value. Here we have the maximum and minimum profits value and this is how you apply the match function to our data field according to the requirements. Next we will see region wise maximum and minimum profits but before that we will add a pie chart to it. I will now see the pie chart with the help of some data. I am using the item type. Here the matrix is uh, with record count as we need the item type here so we replace it. So as I replace it with uh, total profit, it gets updated. You see that the graph shows you percentage of total profit similar to Big Query Cosmetics has a higher percentage meaning that it has higher sales and is at higher profit. Likewise you can analyze other data fields also. Now we will add a filter for the date range selection. From add a control option, we go to the data range control option, place it with the other filters. Let's move to the view mode to check at how this option works. Here are the both pages, um, the previous page and this is our current page we are working on. Now we will do some other analytics by selecting the option one by one. Let me select the region as Central America. The report gets updated. Next we select the date range for time period selection. Let it be from a January 2011 okay so let it be from January 1st 2011 uh, to let's say for the complete same year till December 31st 2011 once the selection is made and the data is updated the graphs change accordingly this selection for the data actually shows you that for the Central American region and for the item selection where all the items are selected with a date range selection of the complete year 2011, this was the maximum gain profit and the minimum gain profit against the each item type. So I hope you have got a clear understanding of the idea behind using the data studio and how to use the different functionalities for creating a report according to the requirements. This is just an intermediate level. You can explore more options on your own and learn it.